Yo, what is up my Nakama? So my name is Daniel and I'm a current third year medical student and today I've got a super exciting video for all of you and myself because today we're watching the first episode of Cells at Work Black and I've heard that this new Cells at Work is like a lot more intense than the previous one so I'm super excited to see what it's all about and I know many of you have been wanting me to continue the Cells at Work series um, but you know YouTube there was like some copyright issues and stuff with the original series that I just didn't want to mess with so hopefully that doesn't occur with this episode I'm just praying to the YouTube gods that they allow me to share this experience with you all uh, but anyways without further ado let's get into the first episode of Cells at Work Black <gasps> Pneumococcus Whoa, this is hype. Oh, dang. Hopefully this is safe to play on YouTube. <laughs> oh, wait, I need to turn on subtitles. I'm not that good at anime yet. <laughs> oh, that red blood cell has the same little uh, hair thing as the uh, previous red blood cell in the, in the first cells at work. Dang, maybe I should have watched this before step one. <laughs> no, wait, the platelets. The platelets aren't as cute as they were in the previous one, but I guess that makes sense because this is probably a much darker version of Cells at Work. <gasps> Chief Stomach Cell. Wait, that's funny that they call them Chief Stomach Cell because some of the cells in the stomach are actually called Chief Cells. The Chief Cells, they secrete um, pepsinogen, which then gets converted to pepsin, and that helps with like protein digestion in the stomach. You also have uh, parietal cells, which are another important part of your um, stomach. And those cells, they secrete uh, acid, HCL, um, also to help with um, digestion. And also it's kind of like a form of innate immunity uh, because the low pH or acidic nature of your stomach is actually pretty harmful to a lot of substances that you might ingest or bacteria that, might, um, that you might accidentally ingest as well. <laughs> Over time. Bro, you're on 24 hours. Yo, wait, what was that? <laughs> that diagram looked kind of jank. I need to go back. What the? This is a jank freaking diagram right here. Like they're they're kind of missing the uh, both the other side of the internal carotid artery. I mean, I guess they do have the subclavian, the left internal carotid brachiocephalic but kind of a jank diagram right here to be honest i'm not sure exactly what they're trying to depict between the between the arteries and the veins eh, who knows i guess this is just his uh initial notes <laughs> that he's taking down might not be correct <laughs> sent by red blood cells oh short on manpower Oh, do you know what might be happening? I wonder if the body is anemic right now. So it's maturing more, uh, it's going through more erythropoiesis, which is when you bring more erythroblasts to become red blood cells um, because you don't have enough red blood cells delivering oxygen throughout the body. Um, and so the person is probably anemic in some form. Um, I wonder why that's why there's probably an influx of, of new immature red blood cells. We'll see. Wait, I really like how they just depicted the aortic valve. <laughs> this must be systole, when the blood, you know, pumps throughout your systemic circulation. <laughs> Wait, the platelets are all like hardcore now. <laughs> Yo, this is kind of sad. Like, I mean, this is what goes on in your body, you know, if you're sick or have some sort of illness, but it, it's sad to see it depicted this way. Oh, that's cool. I like that um, that they mentioned this. So, you know, I think if you are anemic or oxygen deprived, your body does kind of divert your oxygen supply to organs that, that you most need to survive. Like for your brain, for example, like 
if your brain is oxygen deprived for even more than like 30 or 60 seconds, you're going to start to see a lot of deficits. So um, it's cool that they mentioned this. Uh, and obviously other organs might have uh, less oxygen in return. So that's probably what, what this guy is saying right here. Whoa, okay, this is hitting too hard to home right now because I just did six weeks of dedicated studying for step one. And this is kind of the mentality that I had approaching this exam. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall so far, like this is a lot different than Cells at Like Cells at Work, the original series was kind of a, a happy type of anime, like fun protagonists and, and cute characters. But right now, like, this is pretty hardcore right now. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm here for it, though. Like, this is pretty awesome. This is a cool, uh, different take on the Cells at Work series. Oh. Is this atherosclerosis or something? Oh, it is atherosclerosis. So I think it's like, it was plaque buildup. So LDL stands for low-density lipoprotein. And that's kind of like the bad cholesterol you can think of. Like, you actually want more HDL than LDL. Um, HDL like will recycle uh, cholesterol back to the liver um, but LDL like if you have too much of it like if you have hypercholesterolemia um, it's kind of bad um, you can actually take something called a statin which um, will increase uh, which inhibits HMG CoA reductase um, which in turn increases your LDL receptors in your liver and if you increase the amount of LDL receptors you have in your liver then more LDL will be recycled back to the liver and it won't be doing the thing that you just saw um, in this clip um, of depositing like cholesterol. Um, but yeah, this is kind of bad. Uh, this body is not looking too hot. Yeah, that would be really bad. So if there's like a complete blockage, um, even you can start noticing symptoms even after a partial blockage, like in your coronary arteries, if basically if about greater than 70% of the of one of your coronary arteries is blocked um, by atherosclerosis or whatever, then you can start noticing angina or like pain with uh, breathing or with exercise. Um, but when like a heart attack happens, like an acute heart attack, it's usually because 100% of the vessel is clogged and that causes ischemia. Basically red blood cells and oxygen can't be delivered to the tissue anymore. And if you don't resolve that issue in time, then um, the tissue can become necrotic and die. Um, and that's really bad. So you try, you kind of want to prevent atherosclerosis or plaque buildup um, as much as you can um, so that, you know, your tissue doesn't die, of course. Yeah, so active oxygen, more like free radicals that, that can cause um, vessel damage and tissue destruction. Dang, I feel sorry for this red blood cell. Tough first day of work. I actually don't know how many trips a single red blood cell takes around the body each day. It's probably, I mean, it's probably a lot because I feel like your systemic circulation gets circulated a lot throughout the day, but I actually don't know that answer. Yo, is this what clinical rotations is going to be like? <laughs> don't coddle the rookies. <laughs> Whoa, what is this gas? Oh my... Yeah, I mean, the, the show explained it before me, but uh, carbon di that's that this is why carbon monoxide is really bad, because basically um, carbon monoxide has a much higher binding affinity to hemoglobin than oxygen does. So meaning it'll displace oxygen and oxygen can't bind to hemoglobin. So if you have hemoglobin traveling around your body bound to carbon monoxide and not oxygen, that means your tissues aren't receiving an adequate oxygen supply. Um, and actually your body, it does kind of turn cherry red if you have like an acute carbon monoxide poisoning, um, which is kind of similar to how they're uh, depicting the red blood cell right now, uh, which is pretty cool. Oh, this is really cool how they're depicting this. Yo. This is amazing. Wait, I wish our lecturers explained um, acetylcholine receptors as they just did right now. The, this is awesome. But basically, um, acetylcholine receptors are, I think, well, almost, 
well, actually, all of your presynaptic neurons use acetylcholine receptors, and then most of your parasympathetic nervous system uses acetylcholine receptors. Um, and acetylcholine receptors are, yeah, as they say, they're used for controlling like autonomic smooth muscle activity, um, as well as skeletal muscle activity, like, you know, anytime you uh, do some voluntary movements. Um, sweat glands are also important for acetylcholine receptors, except that's actually your sympathetic nervous system, um, which is kind of a caveat, because usually your sympathetic nervous system uses uh, epinephrine and norepinephrine, but in your sweat glands, it's actually acetylcholine. Um, but if there's some sort of like disruption um, of the acetylcholine receptors, then your body might be in some sort of autonomic dysfunction um, where like your central nervous system or the movements that you want to do are not um, being relayed properly um, to the target tissue or whatever action that you want to complete. Oh, dang. I mean, carboxyhemoglobin isn't like evil. They just can't bind to oxygen. <laughs> they have a capsule that make them durable. Holy, this is so graphic. Let's go. Yo, she's pretty sick. Mm -hmm. First line of defense. Oh. oh, oh, that's pretty sad. Oh, dang. Holy, this is getting me hype. I didn't know oxygen delivery by red blood cells could be so emotional. Whoa, this is nuts. Oh, wait, those are really cool. Those are like little um, uh, alveoli uh, sacs or alveolar sacs. Uh, I like how they depict it because they are kind of like um, little sort of uh, bundles like this. Um, you have little like alveoli septa um, uh, that make up like the internal parts of your lung. Um, and that's where like oxygen and diffusion uh, and that's where like oxygen diffusion exchange happens. Um, so I guess we're going to find out what the problem is i mean most likely the carbon monoxide is coming from a an external source like if the body is um, in some environment that uh, has a high co concentration or something oh that does not look good smoking oh he's a smoker oh the carbon monoxide is probably just coming from the inhaled freaking carcinogens and stuff Yo, honestly, smoking is like the worst thing you can do. I feel like, I don't know what the exact statistics are, but I'm pretty sure that like probably 90% of lung cancers are caused by just smoking and like nicotine inhalation. There are other forms of, uh, you can get lung cancer like adenocarcinoma without smoking. Um, and you can also get um, exposure to like uh, workplace substances. Uh, the term is pneumoconiosis. Um, so like if you're just exposed to like lots of carbon um, from pollution or silica, for example, or uh, beryllium, like if you work in an aerospace industry, um, but all those forms, I think, are a little bit less, um, not as prevalent as just lung cancer from regular smoke. You can also get lung cancer from radon. Um, uh, radon is just a substance that is um, can be present in the soil. Like I think a lot of houses are usually radon tested like before you live in them. Um, but compared to smoking, those are all, uh, you don't, I, I, you don't see as many cases of lung cancer because of those reasons as compared to smoking. And also it's really good to stop smoking. So you can honestly see drastic effects, um, that are positive for you, uh, with smoking cessation. Even if you've been smoking for 20 or 30 years, it's really never too late to quit. Um, and definitely, um, I mean, obviously it's, it's a lot harder to just say it and actually quit. But if you discuss with your physician about smoking cessation, they can provide you with so many resources and they can kind of tailor your smoking cessation um, to you because a lot of people, you know, some people might go in the nicotine patch. Some people um, might uh, go through some sort of like cognitive behavioral therapy or something. 
Um, whatever works for you just is the best option for smoking cessation. Whoa. Okay, overall, this was a pretty awesome episode. So it seems like uh, he, the, the body or whoever they're in quit smoking 10 years ago and now resumed it for some reason. Um, maybe they're under a lot of stress. Um, it seems like the body's also eating a lot uh, because I remember the chief cell said like they're kind of being overworked uh, because uh, they're consuming a lot of food. Um, so, I mean, who knows what's going on? Like this should just be a normal person who's like really stressed because of the pandemic, you know, so they're eating a little bit more and then took up smoking again, uh, which unfortunately I, I feel like is happening um, to some people. Uh, but, you know, this is your body <laughs> being hard at work, trying to combat all these uh, negative effects towards it. Um, I just love the way that Cells at Work depicts uh, all of these cells and it it's so awesome to watch and you can honestly learn so much just by watching this show. Uh, but I, I'm actually going to watch, I think they're playing the intro right now. Usually at, in anime, sometimes they, in the first episode, they play the uh, intro sequence at the very end uh, to kind of like hype you up to the show. Killer T cells, macrophage, platelets, white blood cells, red blood cells. <laughs> Whoa. Wait. Oh, wait. Was that the red blood cell? I, I felt like we just got transported out of the body for a second. And we saw the actual person they're in. But I, I think that was just the red blood cell w waking up to go to work or something. All right, let's watch the preview for the next episode. But yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, hopefully we can make this into a series and hopefully YouTube allows me to play this content uh, because I love watching it and I love reacting to it. And it's kind of like we're watching together to some extent. Um, and it's also just really fun watching this anime because it's also about, you know, health and how your body works. Uh, so it's a perfect combination of the two worlds um, that I enjoy, anime and medicine. So I hope you stick along for the rest of the journey. Stay strong and stay healthy, everyone. And as always, Data Bayo.